Hey everybody, this is Fran Frischella, draft expert and basketball junkie. To everybody who's watching, let's get our friends at General Manager Games the subscribers they deserve. Just press that red subscriber button and immerse yourself in sports AI through GM Games content. And on Twitter, it's GM underscore games. Let's get after it. Let's go. Is up, ladies and gentlemen, cards here. Uh, bringing you some more draft day sports, college basketball, but this time we've moved on to college basketball 2022. So, uh, the other fun thing about it is we're still running with the same old Dayton Flyers. Like, we're continuing on from our college basketball 2021 stream straight into 2022 with the same team. So, check it out. I did move past the transfers. Um... The biggest new feature in the 2022 game is the transfer portal, and I haven't played around with it a whole lot. Uh, I do have a single player save on 2022, and in that one, I turned the transfer portal off. It's honestly, personally, my least favorite part of college basketball in real life nowadays. Uh, so it's ruining the sport for me in real life. I turned it off in my single player, but for this, we're going as realistic as possible. We've got the transfer portal on. I did lose two players to it. Um, so I got through the transfer period. We had a whole lot of power forwards that were very interested in coming in. I tried for one of them. It didn't work out. We stuck with the team that we've got. So last season, you know, there, there was a gap from my last stream to this stream uh, because we left off after recruiting this freshman class. And then I just simmed through that regular season on my own. What's up? Chris says we're up and it's good. OBS was giving me problems. Twitch was giving me problems. Uh, switching to the new version. I was a little bit worried about everything, but it looks like we're up and running. Good to go. Chris says we're good. Uh, but anyway, I, I didn't feel like streaming that season of players that we didn't recruit, we didn't know when, you know, we, we got CB22 on the way, baby. We got transfers. We got people trying to make entire teams of transfers. Uh, we got our first recruiting class in, so let's take a quick look at uh, that class. First of all, our big-time recruit was Fernando Ward. Uh, this dude, he was ranked number 94 in the nation. He was top 25 at Indy, and he was top five in the regional camp. Now, he's not friendly. He wants to play, so we'll see. In this new uh, you know, transfer portal simulator 2022, you know, if, if he's going to be grumpy, maybe he's going to be a guy to go, especially I mean, look at the depth we've got at the shooting guard position. Uh, Lonnie Latham. Coming in at three stars with four-star potential. Heck of an outside shooter. Got some scoring, got some rebounding. So he's a heck of a player. Let's just compare him. I haven't compared these guys much. Not a good ball handler whatsoever. Better defensively, better scoring. See, I feel like that's where the big difference is going to be. Five and five on scoring and defense. They're both good outside shooters. And Ward seven and six, so like, that's where the difference is going to be. What's up, random task? You wanted to persuade me away from Dayton. It, it, it happens. I, I had to get away from North Carolina. Uh, that was just like, okay, let's stream for an hour and see if I can go undefeated. And if I don't, like, there's nothing else to talk about or do. Uh, so yeah, even though like Fernando Ward's the two and a half, Lonnie Latham at three, I like Ward better. Um, I actually like him as much as Tyrus Stewart. He might play over him. We're going to have to figure out what we do in between the shooting guard and point guard spots. Uh, star of the team right here, Terrell Wise, big-time outside shooting, big-time defender, big-time rebounder from the three position, good passer, I mean, just an all-around good player right here. Um, oh, I'm sorry, I meant to get around to it, but uh, last year, since I didn't actually show you guys, uh, we were ranked like top 20-ish through most of the season, had a pretty good year, 18-5 and five in conference, and then at the end of the season, we just absolutely bombed. Lost the last two regular season games, lost the opening round of the conference tournament, lost the opening round of the NCAA tournament as a six seed, so that went absolutely horrid. Uh, so that's how last season went. We're going to brush that off and get straight into this season. Um, since I didn't get the buy reports on stream as I was trying to figure out, like, if everything was working on this, uh, we did get the 
it the southeast and the midwest report we got orange and red uh, so we got the one that covers Ohio, and then we got the one that covers Kentucky. We got both of those. We didn't go to Atlantic. We didn't go to Great Plains. We got everything in between. So I'm just uh, just continuing to look here at this freshman class. Isaiah Maxwell, good. Look at the the power forward with an eight on outside shooting. That's intriguing. If this dude sticks around, like what could he develop into? If that scoring gets up to five or six, if the defense gets up to five or six, this is a heck of a player. I'm a little bit disappointed with Cordell Morrill. Good inside shooter, not good at anything else. Maybe drawing fouls, maybe. Maybe he can develop into that. Uh, but for our first class at Dayton, I think it was all right. Oh, so Random Tat says he wished it to see us at a tough academic school. So when this rolled over, like I was Dayton in the last stream, and then obviously I had to sim through that season and get through the off season. When it rolled over, it offered me a handful of uh, head coaching jobs, and it offered Illinois, and I sincerely thought about it. But Chris and I had been talking about me going live tonight, and he had already done up some artwork for Dayton, and I would have felt like a real heel if I just ditched him and went with the Illini. But I sincerely thought about it, and uh, for the uh, DDS College Basketball 22, getting to an academic school like Illinois, like maybe Stanford, uh, maybe that's one of the goals that we try to get to and see if we can work that out. So uh, random tests, maybe that'll be uh, something to look forward to. Uh, maybe we get there eventually. But for now, let's go on through with this. we got a nice budget. We can go to Indy Elite. We can hit up the two camps where we've got reports. I think we ought to have a uh, – we had two transfer out. We didn't land a transfer. I think that we had three scholarships. So we should have five available coming in here to this recruiting season. And I will get you guys all the way through this recruiting season and through this regular season tonight. Uh, we can delete all emails for now. And let's jump into this recruiting. So, yeah, five scholarships available. First of all, let's check out uh, by the Midwest. The, let's go position by position. You know how we do it here. Position by position in the region. If we can't find the targets we're looking for in the Midwest, we will go to the Southeast because we also got a gold report down there. But for now, we're going to start off point guards in the Midwest. Full report. What do we got? Oh, look at this. Number one player in the nation, Tony Bradley. Cool. We got a lot, a lot of interest. This school, this date, and let's check out real quick before we get too far into this. Check this out. 68 team prestige. So this is right on the border. Now, the interesting thing, this isn't like one of those border teams like a, like an Indiana or like one of these other teams that's in the mid to high 60s, but their historical prestige is going to be high. Dayton has a decent prestige, but their historical prestige is going to be right around this level or lower, probably. Like Dayton doesn't have a 95 historical prestige, so it's going to be interesting how this goes. Some of these schools, like I mentioned, IU, you can jump in on this, recruit them for a couple of years, and be straight up at UNC, Duke, whatever, unstoppable in like three years. Dayton, I think, will be a bit of a longer trip, which is what made him interesting to me. So, 68 overall prestige. Let's keep that in mind. <laughs> Bree says I'm the card maker. All right. Fair enough. I, we had Anthony Card in the CBGM, and I was unable to land him. So, I don't know how accurate that theory is, but we'll run with it. I mean, I, I'll let it stand. That's fine. Uh, I think, let's see, one... Right, so we're only able to get six three-star and above out of this region. Let's see if the Southeast has got anything for us. Yeah, a three-star. He's a little bit iffy on the GPA, but he has interest initially. So it'll be interesting to see in the new version of the game, if my theory holds up, we are going to go ahead and add Curtis Bradley to the list. Uh, along with Jamie Kennard down here, hiding. A little three-star point guard out of Florida. Like to see it, like to see it. All right, that's about all we're getting up point guard let's move back to the home region check out shooting guards see what we can get set up here oh lots of interest here one two. throw 11 of them on there now we got a lot of shooting guards already on the team so maybe we need to lay off that look at the five star interest in the Dayton Flyers oh my word all kinds of interest from everywhere oh we're up to 30 players already 
We're only taking three star and above. If I can just stay in region and I don't even have to go to the southeast, why would I leave? Why would I leave? There's no reason. Oh, okay. It's center. There might be a reason. We're not going to get a lot here. All right. Let's check out what the southeast has for us here. Anything? No. All right. For whatever reason, we've got very, very little interest in our center game. I don't know why, because we're running a traditional motion, traditional triangle, a couple of things that are going to have big men just near the rim. Like, are they really scared off by Cordell Morrill? One and a half star, four star potential? No, I wouldn't think so. So maybe it's the walk-on Antonio Randall who will not play at all. I don't get it. But we don't have a lot of interest at center. That's going to be a real problem for us. So... Ordinarily, I loathe going after JUCO players, but we're going to go ahead and add a JUCO. We're going to add a couple of two-star guys in the hopes that maybe somebody pops up at a camp. Like, we just got no interest in the southeast region for centers. So I guess we'll... Whew, we're scraping the barrel down here. Here's these 2.2s. Valerie Homer and Tori Wynn. Somebody remind me to check up later after the ACTs, uh, SATs come in uh, to see whether these guys qualify, whether my theory holds true. But we've got our list of 50 guys. So let's bounce over to the call and watch list. Let's go all positions, all regions. And just start hosting guys. Get people through the door. See what happens. Get these camps out of the way. Let's see. Let's see what we got here. Let's see what the recruiting class. And this is the fun thing. Every other year we've started this, like College Basketball 21. We started in the year 2021. Well, here we are, Draft Day Sports, College Basketball 2022, and we're starting in the year 2042. We're 20 years ahead. We got 20 years of history already baked in. We can go check it out anytime y'all want. Uh, we can see the history of what I did in 2021 as we rolled it over. This is a continued save. Uh, so yeah, we got the history uh, already already out there. We've already been building it up. We can go take a look at our uh, North Carolina you know, superstars, Hall of Famers, whatever you want to call it. Uh, whatever other schools we went through in that save. Where did we start out? Was that uh, where were, where was I before North Carolina, Missouri? All right. See all these uh, camps and camps and visits. Appreciate it. Cool visit. Cool visit. Tony Bradley, who's the number one recruit, was only third. Roy DeLord out of Florida. I don't know if he's one that had interest in us. Ernest Sales out of Illinois. So, a couple of guards there looking good early. Let's get some more of these guys in. Have I ever found a way to identify when the guys who are ranked below 1,000 and end up being four stars? Uh, guys ranked below 1,000 will never end up being four star current ability when they show up as freshmen, uh, but a lot of them will have four star potential ability uh, as they move through. And it, again, it's, it just goes back to camps. It's a random task if you're looking at uh, my CBGM team. I keep going back to Chris Barnes because he was a guy that was uh, MVP of the Georgia Superstar Camp. Uh, he vacillated between like the 600s and 900s as far as the overall recruit. Uh, he was so MVP of Georgia, top 10 at Memphis, and he came in as like a one-and-a-half, two-star and developed into a four-star. Uh, but he's got – like big gaps in his game. So like even Chris Barnes in CBGM as a four-star guy compared to a guy like Fernando Ward in this one, who was top 25 at Indy and a top 50-ish recruit, like just totally different because those super low-rated guys who did stand out at camps, they can have great star ratings and they can definitely fill – they're role players. They can fill a role, but they're going to have big gaps in the game. Like Barnes is like a three on defense and maybe a – four or five on scoring but he's got like a 10 outside shooting he's got the sharpshooter attribute he's a great shooter fantastic shooter he's got the magician trait his passing is like seven maybe eight uh but like his defense is a three so role player 
a lot of uh, uh, no actually a lot of them do they they go to Georgia and they go well maybe not below a thousand when you get down into like the 1200 1300 maybe they're not going to camps uh, but I I tend to not play around in that a whole lot like even even when I was with Bellerman go back and watch my streams when I was with Bellerman I went through uh, and found those guys who who went to regional camps or the Georgia camp and decent, not outstanding, right? Those are top 50 guys in camps, and they're going to be good. Uh, so that's what I look for. Like, those are the lowest range of guys that I'm going to look for traditionally. Um, let's host these guys. I mean, we don't have anybody with, with a great deal of interest yet. Uh, maybe we can scout him live. And Ernest Sales, was he the MVP? No, uh, top five. But we'll go ahead and scout him live. Uh-oh, got our first warm. Sterling Kreider out of Ohio. Hometown boy. Maybe he's close to Dayton, was it? All right. Small forward. Maybe he replaces the small forward that we already got in there. Look at that. We got to be second on his list right now. Decent, not spectacular at Indy. So nothing to get too awfully excited about yet. Let's get through the rest of these camps. I want to run Dayton the same way that I run these other blue chip programs. Dayton's at a 68 overall. Uh, we won't have as much opportunity, but they're still close enough that we can kind of run them like we did Missouri uh, kind of toward the end there where once we get all of our camp data, we're going to go and cut anybody who wasn't at least decent, host everybody still on the list, and go from there. So we'll really uh, fine-tune this list you know, toward the end of August. I'm trying to get through as much of this as I can, as quickly as I can, so that we can get to some games. See how these guys actually perform once we get going. It was a random task that he found a white whale. He was in the Summit Conference, and he found a guy post-1100 who was a four-star guy. Yeah, I'd be really interested to see that save and see if it was a guy that came in at four stars. Like, that would be crazy. I haven't myself seen it. This is a dead period. We're going to skip through this. Summer camp, we can skip through, get a few more hosted. See if we can keep up these good visits. We do have like a 71 recruiter as our uh, recruiting assistant. I do need to, let's bounce over and check that now, just to be sure. He's on recruiting. Uh, this needs to be flip-flopped. Glad we looked. Where are the coach assignments? Why are they all three stars on this page? Okay, they shouldn't all be three stars on this page, but you, my friend, are the recruiter, Nat. Thank you very much. Joe, you run practice, my man. And yeah, high tower scouts. And I, can I save it? Yes, okay. It looked like the button was grayed out for a second. All right, we're all good. Bum, bum, bum. I wish there was a read all button. Uh, but that's it as far as camps go. We've run all the camps. Let's go position by position, cut anybody that sucked at camp, and get rid of them. Decent at Indy. Decent at Chicago. Didn't stand out at Chicago. Get off the list, Andre Milford. Curtis Bradley. Go. Go. Top 10 at Chicago. All right. I like what you're doing. Decent. Eh. Get out of here, Canard. We don't want you. Shooting guards. Got a lot of them on here. Oh, Ernest was MVP at Chicago, of course. Woo! Dan Williams did not stand out. Goodbye. Delzell? No. Dwayne Smith. Eh, all right, all right, all right. Andre Hazleton will keep you around. Didn't stand out. Willis Brinson hit the road. Didn't stand out. Get out of here, Kenny. Phil Stewart, you suck. Tyrone Austin, you're cool. Stevenson, no. Avi? Avi Holden? 
Okay. Alright, so that's it for the shooting guards. Yeah, the uh, the coach ratings were right when I clicked on the coaches. It was just that that particular screen was weird. We can see if it's still weird. No, it looks looks fine from here on and on the coach's side. Now it looks fine. I don't know. Maybe we just had to go through it. Maybe it's one of those things like I hadn't clicked on it yet. I click on it a second time. It figures itself out, and we're good to go. And keep in mind, guys, I'm. This is the first time that I have rolled a save over from an old version to a new version, so I could be screwing some of this up myself. Uh, don't blame anybody but me for any of this. All right, let's check out the small forwards. Top 25, you're good. Top 10 at Chicago. Top 5 at Chicago. Top 10 at Indy, Keith Walker. My man. Where's Keith Walker at? Oh, look at this. Keith Walker, 24th overall, five-star guy, top 10 at Indy. I love these kind of guys. Oh, and we're already, oh, oh, we already had the visit. All right, never mind. Decent at Indy. I was going to say, I was going to invite him immediately, but we had already invited him, and it didn't really work out. So, But those are the kind of guys that I absolutely love, especially in CBGM, like the multiplayer. When you get in there and you get a guy like in the 40s or something, but he was top 10 at Indy. It's where I'm. Uh, it's where I'm making my living right now, guys. If you're not in CBGM, I'm gonna refer to it over and over through the stream. If you like this game and you're not in CBGM, you're absolutely doing something wrong. Uh, check it out uh, either through e either through the GM Games Discord. Uh, there's links on YouTube. There's links in chat. We can get you hooked up. Hit me up on Discord if you want to get in CBGM and you're not already. Didn't stand out at Indy. Decent at Chicago. Ugh. Mm. We'll keep him on the list, but yikes. 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 These power forwards do not look great. And I already know the center suck. Our big men are looking rough because, like, big men is what we desperately need. And none of these guys look like... Oh, all right. Here's the Andrew Wilson. Right here's the answer. Let's go ahead and host him and scout him live. And you know what? Let's go ahead and text him. Let's talk about it. What do you want to know? Yeah? How's your family? Oh, we're top three? I like you, Andrew. Where's he at? He's, he's the last one? He's the lowest rated one. I love this dude. New viewer, Kel the, Bet. What? Kel the Best. What's up, buddy? Glad to have you in here. Oh, yeah, and Chris hooked up the link for CBGM. So if anybody's trying to check out CBGM, uh, right there in chat is the link. Yeah, CBGM is staying in the GM game server. It's a that's pure CBGM is purely a GM games thing. Like we use the Wolverine Studios uh, game to do multiplayer, but like that's not going anywhere. That's staying right there in GM games. That's Chris's baby. Let's run through these centers. Didn't stand out. Come on, Jamar. All right, so we got nothing. Oh, right, Juco. Yeah, we got some Juco's on here. We're going to have to deal with that. Whatever. Didn't stand out. You can go. Top 10 at Chicago, Mr. Smiley. Two-star guy. Now, see, this is a dude... And so it's not like over a thousand like Random Tass was talking about. Before 61, he's a two-star guy, definitely top ten at Chicago. So he's gonna come in and he's gonna he's gonna be a role player, right? He's gonna be like a one and a half, two star current ability and probably four star potential. Uh he'll be fine inside shooting. Actually looks good defensively. His scoring it, like the scout is rating him at a B, B minus scoring, A rebounding. Like that's not how this is gonna work out though. Being that he's a little bit lower rated, he's going to be a two-star, four-star kind of guy. Uh, so the inside shooting will be like an 8-9. Uh, the scoring with a, at a B- minus will probably be like a – it'll start off at like a 5, maybe 6, and then go to like 6, 7, somewhere in there. So you can kind of just scale all these guys back and forth as you see this kind of stuff. 
Let's keep going through here. Didn't stand out. You can get off my list. Top five. Todd Fast. Top five at Chicago. 505. Come on in, boy. Scout you live as well. And let's go ahead and grab this dude. Didn't stand out. Tory Wynn didn't stand out. Ben Bain. Ben Bain. Nope. All right, so that's everybody. We need one more host for this week. We can move on. All right, so everybody on our list was at least decent at camp. Beach Bear, what's up, my man? Glad to have you back in here. Um, well, the recruiter being good at scouting, Bill Dozer's asking about Smiley, asking if the recruiter's good at scouting. And that's not necessarily going to be I – don't, I don't know if that's what is the important thing here or not. I feel like the scout being good at scouting is going to be important. Uh, I think probably both of them to some degree are. Uh, I, I don't really pay as much attention to – like I'll let the stats be a tiebreaker, right? Uh, like I would prefer somebody who's averaging a double-double if they're an inside guy. If you're a point guard, I would like you to be averaging at least four or five assists a game, right? But then there's a thing where like you have to allow for uh, differences in competition among high schoolers. Because some high schoolers are going to be playing in very small places and they're going to have ridiculous numbers, but they're not going to be as good as some other guys who are playing tougher competition. So, like, I'll let that sort of be a guide as far as like what what they might be more skilled in, what they might be less skilled in. Like a guy who's really talented playing against lesser competition, if he's scoring 30 points a game but only getting three rebounds a game and he's a center, he, he sucks at rebounding doesn't matter right uh so there's always that sliding scale back and forth we're only in july i gotta get going been running my mouth too much let's run through this guys we only got how many on our list 26 we can get all of them pretty easily identify our targets we'll slow down and try to identify targets either the 21st or the 28th no uh, breeze with the pun good one Yeah, you might be right, random task. Yeah, I always go with camp data first, and then after that, um, usually I can get through it just on camp data alone, at least in single player. And if I absolutely have to go beyond it, uh, I don't know that stats or scout, like, depending on how good my scout is, I guess I'd go from there and try to figure it out. But I, I've honestly, even in multiplayer, I've never gotten to that point. I've almost always purely gone off camp ratings, and it's tended to work out pretty decent. My team's number one at the moment in CBGM. I think they're a little bit overrated. They're probably going to come back down to earth because they really don't have the right point guard. Uh, this is the Bron gone. LeBron Gonzalez effect still hurting me. Anybody that's around in the league knows what I'm talking about. But yeah, he was a really talented point guard that I had, and he transferred out. Like he tried to go pro, and then came back, and everybody's like, "Oh my God, you got him back!" And then he immediately transferred, so it wasn't worth it. All right, five scholarships. Let's take a look at our roster real quick. Desperately need a point guard. Don't need shooting guards at all. Probably need two point guards if we're being honest. Small forward wise. <laughs> small forward wise. Uh, Terrell wise is going to be back. DePena is going to be back. We could grab a small forward. Ryu and need some inside guys. Got a freshman center, a freshman power forward, a junior power forward. And a sophomore power forward. All right, so probably not a power forward. Probably a center, small forward, and two point guards, preferably. We'll see where we go. All right, 
point guard, which is our most desperate position. Top 10 at Chicago. We're warm on him. This is a no-brainer. All right, so Fowler. Oh, we can go ahead and we already did we already have him? Yeah, we had already offered Fowler. All right, cool. Do I is there some kind of AI on or did I do that earlier and forgot? Somebody let me know if I accidentally left some AI recruiting stuff on. Decent at Indy? No. Like, I'm never take a guy that's decent at Indian five star, like number 10 in the nation. The problem with this dude, he's going to have good potential, but he's going to come in. He's going to be one and done. Maybe you get two years out of him, and he's never going to hit that five star while he's here because he wasn't that great at camp. Didn't stand out at Indy. Decent at Chicago. And then we got Fowler, and then we got Tanner, who's decent at Chicago, and that's it. All right, so Donald Fowler is absolutely our only target over here putting all of our eggs in the donald fowler basket so uh as deep as we are at shooting guard i will consider taking a shooting guard to provide a little bit of depth so let's see what we've got uh sales is obviously great uh, but he's got he's not that interested in us and he's very interested in a lot of other people this guy we're number two on his list only decent at chicago Decent at Chicago. Decent. Top 25 at Chicago. Is that it? Jeez. Oh, my goodness. All right. So, Tyrone Austin. Well, this is it's what happens when you're at a 68 overall. You, you got to fight through it, right? Just build that roster, build up depth, especially in this year because the, the transfers and whatnot – like, we just got to bring in quality because you're constantly going to have bad players going out. And this year, you're constantly going to have quality players going out. Now, look at this. We've got two five-star small forwards that are interested in us. Third on this guy's list. He was top ten at Chicago and decent at Indy, okay? Top five at Chicago, top ten at Indy. Keith Walker, my man. I believe we already talked about him once. We are tenth on his list. Uh, in a multiplayer league, I would never go after this dude. And this one I will. We're we're close. We're in the ballpark, and my coach is 100 overall at everything. So we're going to go after Keith Walker, see what happens, see if we can get lucky. Even if we don't, the best player on our team right now is Terrell Wise. He's a small forward. We're covered at this position. This would be a luxury recruit. All right, at the power forward from the guys that are interested in us, top five at Chicago, that's a yup. Hold on a second. Sorry. Yeah, we need to unlock some categories here. I, I wanted to check that. I thought we might not have anything unlocked on him. All right, so at power forward, Andrew Wilson. We've already got a lot of interest, uh, a lot of categories, rather, opened up on him. Smiley, top ten at Chicago. Let's go through all of them. Decent at Chicago, so Smiley's better. Smiley's better. Fast might be better. Fast and Smiley. Smiley's got us warm. We're number one on his list. Makes it easy, guys. That makes it easy. A small forward at 6'3". Yeah, we get some undersized guys uh, here and there, and I like, to, I like to play into it a little bit, but if I can get a guy who is good at camp, like it, even if he was 6'3", if he was good at camp, you know, he's doing his thing. I think in one of my personal saves, I had a point guard who was like 5'7", you know, a little Muggsy Bogues kind of dude. But he did well at camp, so 5'7", obviously wasn't holding him back that much, right? Do we have all our visits out? We do not. We should be able to get all the visits out, I think, on this visit. And then um, make sure that the five guys that we've offered, we have all of the pitch categories unlocked so that we know what to pitch. It's right in time for September 11th. 
which is when we start making the in-homes. Got a JUCO getting all kinds of crazy about us over here. Okay, so actually one, two, those are the only two. Oh, he declined a visit? Guess what? You suck. I'm going to cut him just out of uh, spite. All right, let's take a look at the guys that we have offered. Keith Walker, need to unlock some stuff. Oh, he slid down to four star. He slid back a couple spots. Still not worried about it at all. Might actually help us. Hopefully he doesn't commit before we get a chance to get in his house. Get in that living room, baby. All that's unlocked. All unlocked. One, two, three, four, five. Fowler, unlocked. Smiley. Dun, dun, dun. Unlocked. Number one on his list. Whew. All right. Let's get through the 6'3". Uh, in college, 6'3 is fine for a small forward. It's not great, but it's fine. Like, think about... Um, Villanova won it. Remember the year they they ran like the four guards and the one power forward, and they did just fine. Like six three can get by at the at the three position in college, no problem at all. Because you, you talk about guys that are six 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 seven, they're playing power forward. Some of them are even playing center if they're big enough and strong enough. So six three as a small forward is going to be all right. Only one player on our entire list that went early. Ty Bossel to Xavier. Go ahead and remove him. All right, so now we got to figure out which of these five offers we do not visit. Uh, Keith Walker, we're definitely going to visit. He's from Indiana. We're going to go in there and talk about location. All right, Andrew Wilson. is Man, I feel like we need a lot of help on the inside. But we also desperately need the point guard. Maybe the shooting guard's the one that we leave alone. Could work harder. I don't like to see that note. But let's get in there and talk about that location. The shooting guard we're going to leave alone. It's got to be somebody, right? Playing time, 100% here. And with Smiley, we go location. Boom. Boom. Give them to me. Bring me the recruits. I want them all. I want them all. We only got one decision. All we got is Smiley. Now let's see if it's us or someone else. All right, we're one for one, baby. We're one for one. Ronnie Smiley. Fowler, he was impressed. Wilson, eh, we're in the running. Keith Walker, going to give us some consideration. We didn't lose anybody yet. We still got four on the hook. All right. Tony Bradley, number one recruit in the country, going to Purdue. All right, so with Walker, we're number two right behind Butler. And Butler is, I've got to say, absolutely destroying it in the CBGM. They're going crazy. I think they've got at least two, if not three, of the uh, Indy MVPs in a row as recruits. So uh, let's hope that streak doesn't continue here. We're going to try to beat out Butler, although... Seems nearly impossible. Sorry, at the last second, I couldn't remember if it was for sure location on him. For Wilson, playing time, location, we moved up to number one. Stick with the location. Home state, boy. Tyrone Austin, we can visit him now. We can go ahead and jump on the location with him as well. And with Donald Fowler, playing time, number one on his list. Let's hope it sticks. Got to go get our scheduling. See now how you jump here is the most important. Yeah, we jump pretty good on most of those. I feel like we were number one, if not number two, on every one of those guys. So we're we're in competition for everybody that we offered. It's no problem. Uh, I don't have any problem with the schedule generated here. Let's roll with it. Ho, ho, ho. My word, look at all this. 
so I usually try to avoid the early look, but here it is. We got Smiley, obviously. We got Fowler, which we desperately needed a point guard. We got Keith Walker, who, like, look at Keith Walker. Top 10 at Indy. This is one of the best 10 players in the country. He's come to the Dayton Flyers. <laughs> Dayton Flyers, baby. Go fly away with Keith Walker. Well, four star just outside the top 25. Like I mentioned, he was number 24. He dropped down two spots. Uh, we're going to just take. I, I'll be all right with that. 26 in the country, top 10 at Indy. We managed to get past Butler. So, uh, I mean, four star, two threes, and a two. Maybe it's not looking too hot to some people. But here's another top 10 regional guy in Donald Fowler at a position that we desperately needed. Andrew Wilson, top five at Chicago. And then we bump up to Mr. Smiley, who was top 10 at Chicago. So we've got, what, two top 10s and a top five at Chicago, plus um, Keith Walker. All we've got left is Tyrone Austin, because we didn't get to visit him in the first week. Oh, yeah, this definitely, uh, I don't even... It's not a, it's not a sleeping giant. Like, they're gonna awaken immediately. Next year, we're going crazy. I'd love to be able to stream two years tonight. I just don't think I can do it. Uh, you know what? We're gonna go all out. We're not even making another visit. We're just grabbing Tyrone Austin. We're taking what we came for and we're leaving. We're taking Tyrone Austin and we're going home. Cause I mean, look, we're we're hot. Nobody else is even warm. That's our dude. We don't have any more scholarships. Why go anywhere else? We got the visit scheduled. He commits right here and we go. He commits right here and we go. Onward and upward. Dayton Flyers. Let's go. Five offers, five commits. Boom. That's how we do it. Still no commit. What'd he say? Thought it went well. All right, but he didn't leave, right? Is he going to be one of these late commit guys? Oh, don't you do it, Butler. Don't you do it. We're still going all in on him. Shooting guard is our least needed position. So, like, if I miss out on this, there were no good other point guard offers to go on. Like, actually, small forward would have probably been where we would have had a little bit of wiggle room. But, um... We've already got a really good junior small forward, and then we've got Walker coming in at small forward. So, like, just didn't make any kind of sense at all. He's just not wanting to commit. That's fine. We'll get there. This is obviously, I mean, top 25 at a regional camp isn't a make-or-break kind of guy. Uh, Donald Walker, on the other hand, is. So we've got a great squad coming in. Oh, he can't see himself playing for us now. I've seen that note before on people, and they still come in and play for you. So you can disregard this. If you guys are out there recruiting and you see this note, uh, the more important thing is dun, dun, he's hot. We're number one on the list. That's it. As long as you're on the list and you're within striking distance, they'll still commit to you. So I'm not worried about that at all. Let's make sure that we got our practice set up correctly. So we're, as usual, running motion and triangle. We got that set up, uh, split up pretty good on the practice time. 10% on each of our zones, 20% man, 10% 2-3, 10% full court. Good to go there. So 20%, 10%. So, yeah, we can – oh, 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 wait. We're running heavy in the zone here. So we need to flip, we need to flip that. We need to flip it here and in the strategies. Defensively, we're going to go 10% man, 90% 2-3. Beautiful. All right, let's let this roll. Get these practices in. Look at North Carolina still hanging around. You know, they just don't disappear that quickly after we leave. I think every school that I've left has ended up winning a national championship after I leave. I don't know what that says about me, but. 
But here we are. All right, we'll get to the practices. We'll get our depth chart set up, and then we'll see what this first season looks like with this, um, you know, we got, what, four freshmen in this class? Doesn't look like we're ranked preseason. And we'll see how they do. I got high hopes. I got high hopes for Fernando Ward. Even though it shows up as like two, two and a half stars, I really love the stats that he's got. Like the scoring and the defense look great. That's uh, you know, that's that's an elite player for certain. So we just need to see what he looks like as far as uh, passing and ball handling because we need to figure out who our who our point guard is going to be. So maybe that could be the upperclassman shooting guard if he's got the skill for it. Let's take a look at the roster. Good luck, Chuck. <laughs> All right, so passing and handling is dreadful. Look at this. This dude, who's a junior red shirt, so this guy, this is his fourth year of college basketball. He's got the ability to handle the ball as a point guard at two. This dude is a walk-on center who's exactly as good at handling the ball. That is is what we call in the business pathetic. <sighs> um, so the shooting guards that I would like to put in there aren't much better. God, Fernando Ward, who is supposedly the superstar, is a one. Yikes. All right. So, what we will do, let's see what, if we let the AI suggest everything, they decide to put a small forward at the point guard, for real? He actually is the best ball handler. I don't know if this is the wrong decision. That might be right. He's the best ball handler. Not the best passer. So then it puts Ward at the shooting guard, which I like. Wise, it lets him play at the three, which I like. I actually think I like this. And Okay, I don't know about the big men. I, uh, you know what? I don't have any idea how these point guards are coming in here like this. Uh, it doesn't make any sense whatsoever to me. Uh, I kind of like what it did putting Pena at the point. I don't like any of... The inside stuff. Let's take another look at the inside guys. What are we looking at here? All right, so from Tucker down are our big men. None of them are currently great. Field goal inside. Maxwell kind of sucks, but he's the best shooter, so maybe he's more of a stretch four. Scoring. Oh. oh. <laughs> Defensively. <laughs> Rick Alexander probably needs to be on the floor, but he can't rebound. Looks like Alexander and Maxwell, to me, look like the best here. So defensively, it's going to be Alexander. Rebounding-wise, it's Maxwell. He's more of a shooter. Alexander's more inside. That's what we're going to go with, Alexander and Maxwell. So we'll move him up. Let the AS suggest the matrix and go from here. You know what? I have no idea. Like I, I do feel like the ball handling uh, skills are really low a lot of the times. Uh, so... Uh, I don't know, just like a, a large percentage of the player base has really bad ball handling ability. Seems like the point guard should be better than the centers for the most part, but um, I think it's just a quirk of the game more than anything. All right, let's see how, let's see how this depth chart plays out. We got a small forward playing the point. 
We got two power forwards playing the inside. I got I just let whoever the computer picked be our backups on the inside. So all of this could be horrible. And then we got to start off on the road against an ACC team. This has got all the makings of a bad, uh, bad thing that's about to happen. But let's see what it happens. We got the Flyers and the Wolfpack of NC State on the road in North Carolina. Oh my God, we absolutely got trounced. <laughs> like I said, bad stuff on the way. So, the good news is Fernando Ward looked good. He was one of our top three performers. Terrell Wise still looking good. Uh, the bad news is, like, yikes, everything else. I don't know. <laughs> that was horrid. 30, 40 point beat down on the road. Uh, you know, now I will say that's what happens when you've got. Let's let's take a look here. Take a look at the depth chart. All right, so we're starting a small forward who is a senior at the point. Starting a freshman, another senior. Oh, no, I'm sorry. He's actually a junior. A little out of position, but all right. And then Maxwell is a freshman. And Alexander. Oh, he's actually a junior. Okay, and then where is our other small forward? I thought that we had another small forward who was pretty solid. Oh, no, 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 that's Wise. I was thinking Wise was a shooting guard for some reason. So is it Terrell Wise is in. So where is Tyrus Stewart in all of this? He can pass. He can't necessarily ball handle. He can score. He can't play defense. Where is Tyrus Stewart in our depth chart? That dude we need to get in. Okay, he's right here. He's only playing 10 minutes a game. That's not going to do it for me. All right, so this guy doesn't need to be playing at all. So what we'll do is go point guard, point guard. Uh, one, two, three, two. Point guard, point guard, point guard. All right, so that way Stewart, he's playing 20 minutes a game. That's a very solid six-man. We need that to be happening. If anything, Lonnie Latham should be picking up the extra minutes. Drew shouldn't be doing anything at all. In fact, what we'll do is we're going to let Latham pick up these small forward minutes off of Cage, who I've never heard of. Uh, also a little off Tucker. Latham's a good player. All right, fine-tune it a little. You know, when you're going fast, trying to get through this stuff, mistakes are made. We'll see if we can get right against Pacific. DePino with seven assists and Ward with 15 points. That's how we do it, baby. All right, so we're looking good. We made, I think we made a few good changes. Uh, hopefully we, hopefully that's not a fluke. Obviously, playing at home against Pacific, you know, that ought to happen. But uh, I'm glad that it did happen because <laughs> after losing by 40, uh, it sort of shakes your confidence when you're doing this live in front of other people. So we lost by 40. We put it behind us. We made a few changes to the depth chart, and I think we got it figured out. Let's see what the inbox says. We got three LOIs, Smiley, Fowler, the point guard, and Tyrone Austin, the shooting guard. So that means Austin committed, which we missed. So we've got two outstanding letter of intents that have not been signed yet. Now, in prior years, prior versions of this game, if they didn't sign the letter of intent on November 19th or whenever everyone else did, it was a huge, huge red flag. This year's game, some of the guys that are going to qualify don't necessarily sign. I, I haven't seen anybody sign and not qualify. I've seen plenty of guys qualify but not sign. So we're not going to worry about this at all. I'm not taking that as a sign. I'm sticking to my guns. I think that my original theory as to who's going to qualify and who's not going to qualify is going to stand strong through at least this year's version of the game. Not worried about it. We're going to move on. We'll check it in uh, late January, early February, whenever it comes up. Moving on, third game of the year. Who we got? 
Miami Red Hot. Oh, Ohio on Ohio violence here. You got Dayton versus Miami, Ohio. A little in-state, uh, I don't know about a rivalry, but some in-state action going here. You, know, you don't necessarily think of Ohio as a basketball state, but tonight it is as the Flyers take on the Red Hawks. You're not coming into Dayton, and nothing's easy in Dayton. You ever been through that city? Nothing but concrete. Hard knocks, baby. Hard knocks. Hard knocks. Fernando Ward, 20 points. DePena with 11. Ooh, you're not messing with Dayton. Get out of here, Red Hawks. Come on now. Let's go. Two and one. Two and one. Yeah, we're going to check random task. Uh, I'm assigning you the duty of making sure that Valerie Homer qualified. That's going to come up at, like I said, either end of January or the beginning of February. So throw that comment out again here in about 15 minutes, I think. 10, 15 minutes. We ought to get there. There shouldn't be too much slowing us down right now unless, like, we get an injury and i got to play with the depth chart more. We should be able to fly right through this. The Raging Cajuns of Louisiana Lafayette coming into the University of Dayton Arena. If you guys have ever seen University of Dayton Arena, like we're getting this for the Flyers, but their arena looks like this. Like it's, it goes like a big, like a U that got stretched at the ends or something. And you can sit way up in the end. I've sat in there and watched games before. It's crazy. So University of Dayton Arena, uh, Big time home court advantage. These raging Cajuns got no chance. No chance. Go home, raging Cajuns. Tyra Stewart, Steve DePena, and Terrell Wise, Terrell Wise, whatever. Go home. We got you. Yeah, it's sometime in January, I think. I think you're right. Uh, talking to random task and chat about the SAT scores, but uh, we'll see when it gets there. We'll keep an eye on it. You keep an eye on it, actually. I won't. I'm going to count on you for that, buddy. We're still trying to get through November. We had the ugly loss against NC State to open up the season. Now we're 3-1, and one, moving through November. See what we get here. Next, Oh, next game is against a number 10 Purdue. Now we do get them at home. So if this team is what I think they are, they'll probably lose by like 12 to 15 here. I don't think they have enough freshman talent to like put them over the edge. At home, I don't think they'll get blown out. Of course, Purdue could be better than I expect. But I expect Purdue to be like a, you know, they're not like S tier. They're like A tier, right? So they're going to be a really good team, but they're not like, like my UNC teams were. I think they're a step behind my UNC teams. But I could be completely wrong. So let's see what happens here. The Boilermakers and the Flyers. I'd put my money on the Boilermakers. But you never know. We got Fernando Ward on the court. That boy can ball coming into Dayton. Purdue and the Flyers. And it's Dayton. Wise with 10 rebounds. Rick Alexander. Rick Alexander. Where's the box score on this game? Rick Alexander, 19 points. My word, Ter Terrell Wise with 10 rebounds. What a game for the Dayton Flyers. Winning by five in the first half, held them off late in the second, and get a win over the top 10 Purdue Boilermakers. Flying high, that's right, we're flying high, baby, flying high. Get the wings out. We're going. We upset a, a top 10 team what I'm talking about all right now we go at Baylor at Notre Dame we could very easily lose back to back here very very young team and like we do have some senior depth but it's like small forwards like Steve DePena running the point <laughs> so I don't, I don't know how to quantify that Tucker was, was a plus 11 off the bench. That's awesome. What's up, Just Mar? Yeah, that was a huge upset, buddy. Yeah, I didn't see uh, Tucker with plus 11 off the bench. I'll have to go check that. Antoine Tucker, the sophomore. 
you know, sometimes these guys with like a decent inside shooting rating, sometimes they can get some rebounds and some easy putbacks. But then again, sometimes, uh, you know, you just, you get that lucky RNG roll when you're the home team. And we could very easily see the exact opposite of that right here against the Baylor Bears. In fact, I fully expect it. I think it's more likely we lose to the Bears than it was that we lose to the Boilermakers in the last game. All right, so headed down to Baylor, fresh off a huge upset. Let's see if they can keep the momentum going or if the Bears bring them back to earth. Yeah, the Bears bring them back down. Depenia tried. Rick Alexander tried again, but we couldn't quite pull it off on the road. We're plummeting back. <laughs> into the stratosphere, and we lose to an unranked Baylor team, although they are undefeated so far. Uh, but we couldn't quite pull it off. But it was close on the road. So I like to see that. Hopefully it's something that we can develop throughout the season, get some of these young guys going, and maybe in March put it on them, right? We're 4-2. I'm feeling good. Yeah, that's exactly right. It was a close one, Just Mar. You're absolutely on it. Like, if I got blown out again like I did at NC State, I'd feel like a real jerk right now. But we kept it relatively close. Now, here, this is a, a little bit more interesting because we're going to Notre Dame, but they're 4-4. Four and four. So I feel like this one should be really close. Like, losing a really close game here would be all right. But I feel like maybe we could. If we had a more experienced team, maybe we could pull it out. With so many young players, I don't know. But I'm hopeful. Oh, three points. God. Oh, I hate you, Notre Dame. Ah, super close. Man. <laughs> if this wasn't my first year, any other year, we'd have been fine in that game. But, man, we're playing small forwards at the point. We're playing walk-ons. We're playing freshmen. We're going all over the place, and we just couldn't do it. Look at the Irish held up. What's up, Blaze? How you doing, buddy? Good to see you in the chat. Hey, you know, we're trying. We're with the Dayton Flyers. Yeah, I don't want to talk about Agalia. Agalia. If Agalia wants to watch, if you would like to comment about the Notre Dame issue, he can go back and check the last CBGM game that we played. Because uh, I think it was something like 30 points. But, you know, that's just, a, that's an aside. That's not really part of the, the broadcast, the stream. <laughs> What's up, Agalia? All right, Dayton and BYU, we're back at, oh, no, we're not back at home. We're in a tournament. We're on the road. We're on a neutral court. So let's see if our freshmen can play, like, pick yourselves back up. Two tough games on the road. Pick yourselves up and do it against the Cougars. Do it against the Cougars, baby. 18 points. Tucker Stewart. Yes, sir. So now we oh, now we gotta turn around a six and one DePaul team. That's interesting. You talk about sleeping uh sleeping giants or whatnot. Like DePaul, I understand like they, they might not have the history, but this is a team that plays in Chicago. Uh, you know the players that come out of Chicago. Have you ever heard of Anthony Davis? Like Chicago's ridiculous for high school talent. So DePaul, like sooner or later, somebody's going to go in there and start pulling these players. So hopefully I haven't run up against them here, but it's possible. They're, they are 6-1. and one. Neutral court. What can we do? Oh! Oh! <laughs> Heartbreaking. Heartbreaking. 77-79. to Couldn't do it. Oh! That's going to be this team all year. They're going to break hearts. They're going to be... They're going to win some games like that Purdue game at home, and they're going to break hearts on the road. We'll make the NCAA tournament probably like a like 8 to 10 seed. God. And then we're just going to break my heart mostly, hopefully. If, if I go down, if we go for like more than 30 seconds on stream and I'm not saying anything and not getting a beer out of the fridge – uh, somebody call a doctor. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. Western Michigan came into Dayton and played it close. 
But Fernando Ward was having none of that, and we pulled it out 64-62. So, a little bit of growing pains. Hopefully that was a – you have ups and downs with a young team as you're building a program. Hopefully that was a down. Even though it was a win, hopefully it was a down because if that was an up, the rest of the season's going to look rough. But I don't think that's the case. I think that was a down. I think we're going to turn around. We've got to go at Iowa, which might be tough, and then versus Vermont should be good. Should be good. Uh, at Rhode Island. At Rhode Island actually might be one to, to one to watch for. Blaze starting CB22 at Portland State. Yeah, I think uh, we were talking on Discord the other day about your Portland State team and about some of the guys you're going after. I think you got a uh, – based on the guys you were showing me, I think you got something rolling out there at Portland State. I think you give it like two to three years – like, I find in this game, if you can survive that third year at a new school, that's when it really takes off. Like, you solidify yourself, you bring your guys in, and the third year is when you take off. Third or fourth year. If you can get it by the third year, you don't get fired. If you got to wait till the fourth year, you got to either hope that you're at a really low-pressure job or that you get super lucky on something else because you can definitely get fired, as I did, at Nebraska, live on stream, Go back and check it out on YouTube, on the GM Games YouTube. It's out there. I got fired. Dayton at Iowa. Yeah, you definitely need to make a comeback in CBGM. We miss you, Blaze. The Flyers and the Hawkeyes. Oh, all right. We're, we're just not making it happen on the road at all. We don't have the experience. It's not working out for us. We're having a tough time. Six and five. Maybe we can get it going in conference play. And we're, we're not going to be playing as good of teams in conference play, hopefully. So maybe we can get it going there. Get these freshmen a little bit of experience. Let this 6'5", uh, you know, small forward, whatever he is, that's playing the point, figure out how to pass the ball and whatnot, and, and, and run this offense, and we'll get it there. But keep in mind, this is still the second year at Dayton. You know, we're still very much uh, building this program. And not only do we have a hand – like, we've got some very talented freshmen out there this year – We've also got some freshmen that need to develop, and we're bringing in more of the same next year. So the true the true uh, result of this team, like how they actually end up a year, two years, three years down the road, honestly is going to be totally dependent on this new transfer portal. So I'm very interested to get into that and see how it works. I don't think we'll see – we're not going to see it tonight. Uh, I'll, I'll cut us off once we get through this entire season. Vermont coming into Dayton. Hopefully we don't slip up here, but this feels like one of those games. All right, no. <laughs> it was not one of those games. Although Andrew Tucker did suffer an injury, so hopefully that's not bad. All right, 24-point win there. Tucker, bum, bum, bum. Strained abdominal, he's fine. He'll be good. Just taking a look here. Look at Rich Alexander. Rick Alexander, rather. Tower Stewart, the sixth man. Is the sixth man doing more than the starter? Sure is. All right, how's that working out? Ten points a game, Fernando Ward. All right, let's, how far are we? We're already 12 games in. This is statistically relevant. I want to look at Stewart versus Ward. All right, so Ward's getting about six more minutes. Way, way worse field goal percentage. Way worse three-point percentage. I 
I think we got to flip these guys. As good as Ward is, I think we got to flip them. All right, so we're pulling our top 25 indie recruit out. Going with the senior. Maybe we should have been the whole time. Who knows? All right, so we benched our top 25 indie player. We've brought back in the senior. Let's see if it makes a difference. Any significant difference going forward. It, it, it very well could. I don't want to lie. Like Ward's going to be a great player. But our seniors got so much experience in our sets. Like It makes a big difference. It really does. Well, well in my opinion, it does. I'm telling you that. Let me show you that. Let's go through a few more of these games. At Rhode Island, Duquesne at home, at Fordham. I mean, this is kind of a tough stretch. These are all decent teams. They all have winning records. Let's see how we go. We're moving on from 2042. Happy New Year! We're moving into 2043, ladies and gentlemen. It's nice in the first stream of the new game to already be in 2043. It's really cool. The... Uh, the rollover from 21 to 22 has been absolutely seamless. So, guys, if you're uh, uh, random, ask, random task asked if it has a new conference alignment, I'm honestly not certain. I haven't looked around that much in it. I can say anybody that's already got 21 that's wanting to move into 22 and wondering like if it's difficult or whatever, you hit one button. All you do is take your 21 season, sim it to May 1st, Save it, open up 22, upload it, and you're good to go. It's seamless. Absolutely fantastic. I've never done it before in these games, and I uh, couldn't be easier. <laughs> Very happy belated New Year's, yeah. All right, on the road, on the road at Rhode Island, even. Dayton and Rhode Island. All right, there we go. Now we're fighting on the road. Maxwell and Alexander getting in there. The bigs making it happen. Got a little upset over what was Rhode Island. Who was the NBA All-Star that went to Rhode Island? Was that Lamar Odom? Somebody went to Rhode Island. Somebody really good. I can't remember who it was, though. Somebody shout it out. Uh, 22 just came out. I would say within the last two weeks, but this is my first stream of 22. Yeah, I haven't played it a ton single player yet. I've played it some. Uh, the thing is, this year in my single player, I'm trying to do like game by game. So I'm actually coaching out the games because I feel like it's a little bit more immersive. But I don't think that would play well in a stream. So in the stream, I'm trying to keep it the same way that I did in the past. Duquesne coming in to play the Flyers. Oh, we let one go at home. That's disappointing. All right, we'll see how it goes. That could just be a letdown. Could be indicative of something that we need to address. So we'll see. We'll keep an eye on it. It was Lamar Odom. All right, cool. I knew somebody went to Rhode Island. I was running through some uh, Sims earlier, and I saw a Jonathan Thompson going to Georgetown. Thought that was an interesting one. All right, at Fordham, we got to get it. We got to pick it up here. Eight and six, one and one in conference. Like, let's get going. I, I got to get these freshmen 
toward the end of the season, they got to be picking up these offenses. Like we we should really be beating teams like this. Oh my gosh. It's killing me, guys. It's killing me. We should be better than this. We've got a great sh- we've got a handful of great shooting guards. We've got a really good small forward. There's no reason we should be losing like this. Other than the fact that we're playing a small forward at the point. And our inside players are terrible. Other than that, no excuses. Like, get it together. Man, we might be lucky to go like 10-8 and in conference. Lamar Odom never made an all-star appearance, really? That's interesting. Picked a better A-10 team. Who, like St. Louis? Let's see how this goes. They're 11-3, and 3-0 in conference. Coming into the Flyer Arena. You're coming in here, Billikens. Oh, my God. One point. Mm. Oh, one point. Are you kidding me? The Billikens? Mm. I should have taken my blood pressure medicine today. Home of Larry Hughes and nobody else. The Billikens can't lose to the Billikens at home. You can't let it happen. Absolutely not. I do not like this timeline. Random task. I don't care for it in the least. This is frustrating. We're one in three in conference play. We thought conference play was going to bring us back. It's bringing us down. Now we got to go on the road to UMass. We're not on the right trajectory. This is not great. Not great at all. The Minutemen and the Flyers. Flyers thought that they were headed right back for the NCAA with their uh, solid freshman class. And solid, like, you know, the upperclassmen, like, I've had worse. My first class at Louisville NCBGM was worse than this Dayton team. So, you know, I thought I had a chance here. Let's see if we can get back on the right path against the Minutemen. If not, we might be in a tailspin. Oh, God. Oh, God. We're horrible. We're horrible. We're one in five, one in four. We're one in four in the A-10. Oh, this is not going in the right direction at all. We need help. We, you know what we need? Streamer beverage. Hold on. This is going to be the key. This is where we turn it around. Hold on. Watch this. Take these. Throw them in the trash. Get a new refreshment. Oh! All right, now we're refreshed. Dayton Flyers, Rhode Island Rams, Lamar Odom 2.0. He never made an all star game. There's no way his alma mater can beat us at our own home arena, the home of the Flyers. You can't come into Dayton and win a game like this. God damn, we suck. Ah! 76 67. Like, did somebody get hurt? We were good. We were good. We were winning games. Like, what happened? Like, Fernando Ward's still not great. I still don't think that's the issue. It's a recycling bin down there. Uh, random task. Right, so, Tyler Wise is hurt for one more day. Fernando Ward should not be playing point guard whatsoever. That's probably an issue. All right, let's try this. But he's still better scoring and defending, so he should still get the shooting guard minutes. Okay. Let's try that. Come on now. No, they cannot. 
Weiss will be back next game. He's fine. He was never that injured to begin with. He was like above 85%. So we're going to be fine. We had a really, really tough January, a really tough start to conference play. We're going to pick it up here, finish strong. Let's check a couple things first. It's so embarrassing that this dude is really probably the best option that we have at the point. All right, so what I wanted to look at was our offensive sets. Oh, we're way better at triangle than we are motion. And it's we're way too good. Too good. All right, so there we go. Seventy thirty, and we're gonna run these offensive sets way more often. All right, defensively, we're fairly even in between man to man and two three, so we can keep running our zone. That's fine. All right, offensively, hopefully the the change up there on the offensive sets hopefully helps us out a little bit because we are a, a lot better at the one offense than the other. And um, as good as the players that we're playing, as good as they are at that offense, we should be running it way more than 60% of the time. 60% was the set that I had last year when they really had no knowledge at it. So... That's one of those things where I was too late to adjust to it. Of course, it doesn't help us at all against Duquesne. I'm going to break something if we don't win a game soon. It's We're 1-6 in the A-10. I'm going back to North Carolina. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. I'm sorry, Dayton. It wasn't for me. What is happening right now? we got Davidson at home, at St. Joe's, who's terrible, and then the Bonnies at home. We need a three-game win streak right here, right now, immediately. Eight and 11. This got to be a bad dream, right? I'm not sure I've ever had a dream about streaming, so I don't think it's a dream, but it's possible. Davidson and Dayton... In Dayton Arena. I, I can't say it enough. Home court advantage. Flyers, please. Like you're in your own ho you're in your own house. You're in your own locker room. Don't let Davidson come in and push you around. Don't do it. Yes! There we go, Tyra Stewart. There we go, Terrell Wise. Yes! Show some pride. Dayton Flyer pride. That's what I'm talking about, baby. Yeah. Not an 11, 2 and 6. Here we come. Oh, turning it around. Go ahead and signal the, uh, the beep, beep, beep. We're turning it around, baby. Don't look now. Don't call it a comeback. All right, 9 and 11, 2 and 6. We can do this. We got it. That was a huge win. It was a huge win, not only to break the losing streak, but we beat them by like 20. So, yes, huge win. No doubt about it. Keep pushing. Keep pushing. We're going to win this game. We're going to go to St. Joe's. Now we're going to win on the road in the conference, which is extremely difficult. But we fine-tuned our strategy. We fine-tuned our roster. Now we're going to fine-tune that record, baby. Here we come. Here we come. Move, Hawks. Get out the way. Get out the way. Move, Hawks. Get out the way. Get out the way. 15-point ah, win on the road. 
That's what we're doing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We got, we righted the ship. We have righted the ship. One more game again. Oh my God. We all right. So we're going against the Bonnies at home. They're 11 and nine. We're going to win that one. And then we got to play VCU. And that's when we'll see how, how much of a course correction we've made. <laughs> Breeze likes that one. <laughs> oh, what was that move, Bonnie's? Get out the way. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. There's always home court advantage. Billdozer says he thinks a home court advantage has been tuned down. I haven't seen it yet. But I'll admit I haven't played a lot of 22 yet, so we'll see. All right. Um, the Bonnie's coming in. Pretty close-looking game here. If we have righted the ship, we win by more than 10. If it's close or if we lose, everything else was a fluke. Oh, we have an injury. Uh-oh. Oh, Tyrus Stewart's out. Well, that's kind of brutal. All right, so Ward obviously goes back in. Latham takes his place. And then we're just going to slide him down until he's not in, the, not in it. Let the AI suggest this. All right, let's give this a go, see how that works. Do I ever sign international players on the game? I will sign international players if I go through a recruiting season and cannot get national players. Like, if I've struck out and I'm out of options, it's like a roll of the dice, you know. First of all, very important, St. Bonaventure coming in to Dayton, uh, Two teams that are on the wrong track trying to get right. Let's see if we can hold on. Fernando Ward, 28 points. Antonio Randall with the double-double. Those are both freshmen, right? I know Ward is. Randall's a freshman, right? Oh, oh Randall, not. Nope. No, nope, he's a walk-on junior. Just joking. I was just kidding about that, but Fernando Ward, definitely a freshman, very much. And just scored 28. So, here we go. Um, random test. Doing your job for you. We wanted to go see how everyone did on the SATs. Especially those guys that like had the super low GPAs. So, all region. Call so, this is everybody from my call and watch list, right? All positions. So, hold on, real quick. My SAT minimums are 920. I only added players that at least had some interest before I started. And there you go. The lowest player that was on my list. Af and now, I did cut, I reminded you to remember. <laughs> I did cut anybody that sucked at camp. But even after I got past that, nobody still on my list was below a 950. So every single person on the list qualified. Was there a specific person we were supposed to look at? Have I checked the new recruit rank screen? No, I haven't. Not yet. We'll check that here in a second. Uh, if there's anybody specific I should be looking at, 
shout it out. Otherwise, I will go ahead and look at that recruit ranks screen. So, wait, five-star commit. Ah, Keith Walker moved back up. Okay. I mean, we're looking pretty good in the A-10. Let's check overall. Are we highlighted here? Or no? Uh oh. Sorry, I clicked the wrong button. Oh, it still clicked. Click the middle mouse button. It's very disturbing. All right, there we go. We are 15th in the country. Valerie Homer is who we want to look at. Uh, can we search him? Because I don't think he's... I don't think he's still on the list, right? It's, it's one of the guys that I cut. So let's see if he was in the Midwest. Valerie Homer with a 920 SAT. 920. SAT minimum, 920. It's almost like I played it before and picked up on some patterns. <laughs> he was he was gonna he he would have qualified. So yeah, Valerie Homer qualifier. Alright, let's keep going, guys. Let's push through this. Really need to go on a huge run here if we have any shot at making the real tournament. Otherwise, we're going to be in like the CBTIGT, whatever it is. Nonsense. Absolute silliness. CIT. Of course he would have qualified. I told you. I told you I've been telling you all for more than a year. More than a year. Nobody wants to listen. All right, here we go. True test. We're going to lose this, but by how much is the question? And if we win, I'm losing it. Number three, the VCU Rams. 19-2 and two, coming into University of Dayton Arena. The concrete jungle of Dayton. The Rams and the Flyers. You can't catch us. We're flying. You're Rams. You're on the ground. We're flying around. You got nothing, VCU. Nothing. Nothing. I tell you nothing. Nothing. I tell you nothing. 33 points. Get out of Dayton. Go home. Go home, VCU. Oh, my word. Go home, VCU. You got nothing. Get up for the Flyers, folks. Get it. My goodness, what a game. Woo! Don't come around here. Don't come around Dayton. My goodness. Oh, I got to stretch after that one. Oh. Beach Bear says, ooh, yeah, that's right. Ooh, ooh, VCU, you can't mess with us. Dayton's got you, bro. That's exactly right. VC, boo. The VC, boo, Rams. Yeah, random task all over it. Uh, Beach Bear, sorry. Yeah, uh, everybody actually all over the pun. Ugh, it's a huge win. I mean, of course, we got to 
build on it. So let's see if we can build on it. I mean, they went into St. Bonaventure and had some payback. Uh, let's see if we can do it against the Spiders. The Flyers and the Spiders. Uh, th this is this seems like mascot-wise, we should definitely lose. Flyers lose to Spiders, I'm pretty sure. But basketball-wise, who knows? Anything could happen. Dayton and Richmond. Ah. Uh, Pena couldn't make it happen. Could not make it happen. All right. Well, I'd say we had room for exactly one slip. The rest of the way, we need to lose our freaking minds and just blow everybody out. Starts off with LaSalle at home, then at George Mason, at George Washington. I think we can go 3-0 and here. And that would actually... Get us back above 500 in conference. So, yeah, I mean, we we did our thing, Chris. I don't know what to tell you. We're, we're bad dudes at home every now and then. Like, they can play. That's the whole thing. Like, this, this team's loaded up with talent and potential, and they're just not developed yet. So, you know, it's only, it's only year two. Give me a break. I told you, year three is... Mm, sometimes hit or miss and year four is where everybody should be setting it off if you're not setting it off by year four you deserve to get fired but we're still in year two and here we go against LaSalle and we're doing we're taking care of business 75 61 LaSalle get out go home you got no business being here Who else we got? We're, we're about to go to George Mason. We got the we, double George coming up. And then Fordham at home. Like we should be winning these games. But my, my fear is we've probably already lost too much to get to the NCAAs. 13 and 12. Like It's probably reliant on a conference tournament run at this point. At George Mason. Ah. Couldn't get it done. It's tough on the road. Tough on the road in the A-10. That's a bad one. And that guarantees it's either A-10, tourney run, or nothing. So the rest of these games are just, uh, don't matter a whole lot. Try to not get anybody hurt. <clears throat> and then somebody has to be on duty to remind me to bring back in our injured player whenever he's healthy. Let's see if he's healthy yet. Dun, dun, dun. Nope, still out for 48 more days. Let's see, that's the rest of the season. Never mind, nobody needs to remind me when our player is back from the injured list because it will be next season aka never now what you got George Washington oh my god we lost to George Washington at home what are you doing we beat Purdue at home we beat VCU at home and then you lose to George Washington all right, this team, I officially have no idea what these guys are doing. I don't know how to reach them. I'm lost. Thank goodness it's only season two. I, I mean, I'm at this point, I'm hoping I don't get fired this year. Qualify for the NCAA, win the conference tournament, win 20 games. No, 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 no. We're not doing any of these. I might get fired here. It's not impossible. Hey, Chris gets loose to the dollar bill. Yeah. Hey, Chris, get started on a, a new uh, a new mascot or a new uh, 
intro screen or whatever because I don't think I'm surviving this year, bro. I think I'm done. I think we're getting fired. We're 13 and 4, 6 and 9. This is brutal. Fordham Rams, come on down. What have you got? Fernando Ward with 31. Like, oh, if he would do that every game, we'd be good to go. Two more games. Can we at least pull to 500? They're, oh, at St. Louis, home against, oh, we lost at home to St. Louis. So on the road to St. Louis is virtually guaranteed loss. We're not going to the NCAAs. We're not going to be top 25. The only thing left to see on the stream is whether I get fired. I'm not going back to North Carolina, no. I mean, if I get fired, we'll we'll um, we'll crowdsource it. We'll see who every where uh, where chat thinks we ought to go. I just didn't think it was even remotely possible, but it definitely is at this point. Like expectations have been adjusted. For the record. Shoot, sorry. On the road against the Billikens. Oh, we got them! They beat us at home. We win by 16 on the road. There's light at the end of the tunnel. It is probably a train, but there's a possibility. At home, against the Minutemen, we could get back to 500 in conference. And at the very least, that's a little bit of respectability, I feel like. Just a little bit. All right, here we go. This is for all the marbles. Not only does this get us even on the season, it gets us even in conference. I don't know what any of that means because 500 records suck. But this gets us to 500 everywhere. Theoretically. Let's get it, Flyers. Let's go, baby. 500. 500. Do it for me. Got to do it. You got it. You got it. You got it. You got it. Yes! 83 to 80. Steve DePena. Yes! 500 champions. We are the best at being... Oh, 16 and 14. I thought we were 15 and 15. Never mind. We're at least 500 in conference. Whatever. We're still 500 champions. I'm not going to relinquish that title until somebody comes and takes it out of my cold, dead hands from the NIT. So, eat it. <clears throat> See what we get in this conference tournament. I, I feel like it's about time to make a run. I don't know about y'all. Anybody else, if you're in chat right now and you feel like it's time to make a run, just yell it out. Because I think we're going to do it here. Like, who would want to play this team right now? Absolutely nobody. Nobody wants to play this team. Guarantee it. Nobody wants to play us. St. Joe's, 11 and 20. Okay. Uh, we're better than 50 50. I'm not taking that. We're guaranteed. NCAAs, baby. NCAAs are bust. St. Joe's. You got nothing. Absolutely nothing. Neutral court. Oh my God, we lost the same goals. Oh. 
<laughs> Pathetic. So maybe, in hindsight, if you don't have a point guard on the roster that can handle the ball better than your centers, could be problematic. Uh, that's one of the many insights I've gained from this season in particular. But we lost in the tournament in the very first round to a terrible team. And so now all that we really have to do is to get into next season and see what our uh, what our recruits look like. Because that sucked. Yeah, I shouldn't have used the upset. That wasn't the beginning of the season. It was sort of the middle-ish. It was still fun. I think it's time to try to win the CBI. I already did that in... Oh, wait. I think I won the NIT in the CBGM. CBI I might have won in uh, the our multiplayer league before that. Don't need to see that I did not make the tournament. We will skip this. Thank you. Do we even have a game to play? Oh, we do against South Dakota. Cool. Cool beans, South Dakota. How are y'all doing? The Coyotes and the Flyers. Coyotes can't reach things that fly. Flyers definitely have the advantage here. <laughs> Suffered an injury there. Uh, but we're in a not important tournament, so we'll let the AI deal with that. And now we got Richmond again. Just give up. Spiders have definitely got the advantage on Flyers. Oh! Until the postseason, baby! Let's see what we got now. We got Tulsa. Oh, they're 21-14. and 14. Even if they're in the CIT, they're at least a good team. So, this will be a loss. At least we're 18 and 15. Like, we can't have a losing record overall. What's, what's, to oh, Golden Hurricanes. I was saying, I was thinking Golden Sparks or something. Golden Hurricanes. All right. Flyers and the Golden Hurricanes. Like, a Hurricane's cooler than a Flyer. They're a better team. They're at home. Oh, but we got him. Lonnie Latham went off. Off the bench, 62-61. We're moving on, baby. The Flyers. See, I te it's when they came to play. It's when they came to play. C-I-T. 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 What do you got? Ooh, Texas Tech. Putting it on Seton Hall. Holy Cross just beat Wisconsin badly. All right. Dayton and Idaho State. What have we here? Any other games? Yeah, there's a few other games. All right, so the Bengals and the Flyers. Oh, I'm a Cincinnati guy now. It's really hard to root against the Bengals. Let's see what we can do. One point win. One point win. Survive and advance. Survive and advance. That's all they got to do. Make it happen. Texas Arlington. Is this a finals? Could be. Let's see, Butler won something. Texas Arlington. Dayton Flyers. Let's double check that our dude isn't healthy yet. No. Still 10 more days. All right, well, that's a shame. That we have to beat you without him. 
Oh, five points. So close. It was right there. Had it. Ah. I have a feeling that was the final, but I'm never going to check because the CIT tournament is worthless. Holy Cross is number five. Holy Cross is about to win the national championship. Holy Cross. We beat VCU. No way they win. This is Holy Cross. Oh, my God. VCU. We beat the champs. We beat the champs at home. Come on. Give me a break. It's a BS. All VCU and Duquesne, Davidson. Ah, oh, that's BS. Dayton's taking over next year. Guaranteed. Uh, you could see we were on the cusp this year on so many games. We were right there with them. Over and over and over. Over and over. It was so close. Failed, failed. We won 20 games and improved school prestige. Holy crap, we're not getting fired, guys. Let's grab ourselves a recruiter and move on to the next season. We go to Texas, Wisconsin, Notre Dame, Temple, Nova, Cincy. Oh, man. Oh, Cincy's where I actually want to be. Hmm. Anybody want me to go to Cincy from Dayton or just stick with Dayton? I would like, probably like to stick with Dayton, but Cincy I thought would be interesting before we started. I'll give it. It's 759. I'll tell you what. <clears throat> really got to hit the restroom. I'm going to run up, hit the restroom. When I get back, we'll see if there's uh, significant feedback either way. I'll think about it. Otherwise, we're going to roll on with Dayton. Just shout it out. I'm not taking on St. Joe's. It's since here, Dayton.
What have we decided? Cincinnati's okay. To the Ivy League team. <laughs> All right. Seems like there's not a whole lot either way. So I'll... Oof, as much as Cincy would be cool, I'll stick with Dayton. Probably got about a hundred thousand. We might be able to just grab this dude. Let's offer him ninety. Brian Michelson. Yeah, I think that Cincinnati would be fun. Like the probation thing, whatever. Uh, Dayton's going to be fun. I just. Oh, we got Michelson. Cool. So that fills out our staff, I believe. Yes, it does. So we can advance on through this. Finish in advance. Yeah, I mean, Dayton's a safer option. I feel like Cincy has a little bit more upside, but like not significantly. A little bit cooler just because I'm like basically in Cincinnati like I like where I'll work in Cincinnati um you know I can get to the river in like 15 minutes Dayton's about an hour hour and a half north of me probably an hour <clears throat> and it's a little bit of a bigger basketball school right like um oh Jesus uh you know, Nick Van Axel. Uh, not Marcus Camby. Who am I thinking of? Who was the center that broke his leg? UC would have like won the national championship except the center broke his leg. Kenya Martin. <clears throat> All right, there's our other two LOIs. So, as I mentioned, nobody that we recruited failed to qualify. Love you to increase the budget, but I don't think that's going to happen. Of course not. All right, so here we go. And what I'll do on this, because the transfers are such a big thing, I'll get it through the like report buying and all that, and we'll see who transfers out. And then when it comes to transfers in, that's where we're going to cut the stream. And I'll start off the next one with uh, the transfer window and then the recruiting window, so it all kind of flows together. Uh, so I think that makes sense. But let's see how this goes, first of all. And, of course, that also gives us an opportunity to look at not only the development of the guys we already got, but how the incoming freshmen look, who transfers out, and what is our uh, roster going to look like next year in Draft Day Sports Transfer Portal Simulator 2022. I think that's the official name of the game, right?
All right, let's see how this turned out. Top 20 recruiting class, love it. So we, we definitely want the Midwest premium. I'll do the Southeast premium just because I have money. We don't need it by any means, but we can't do national. Might as well grab an extra region for fun. Could get somebody, never know. Uh-oh, <laughs> we lost some players. This roster looks thin. <laughs> Holy shnikes. Uh, where did everybody... Where's Lorenzo Ward? Where's anybody we... Where'd you go? All we have is freshmen? Oh my god, this is exactly the reason I can't stand real-life college basketball anymore, and it's interesting that this game has encapsulated that, but still infuriating. That's all for my freshmen. Every single freshman left. All right, so here's Donald Fowler. He can pass and ball handle and shoot and play defense. So he's should be locked in as a point guard of the future. Like, oh, we had four shooting guards last year, and now we just have this dude. We have two great small forwards. Obviously, one of them is going to have to play at the two. It's going to have to be this guy because we can't risk upsetting the delicate flowers and forcing them to transfer. Um, but yeah, all the freshmen look incredible. Like if we play one, two, three, four in him at the point, that seems like a really good team. Oh my god. It just reminds me how much I hate the real life transfer portal. Nothing against the game. You got it exactly right. This sucks. But that's what happens, guys. Here we are, Dayton Flyers, May 29th. This is sort of the roster that we've got. Uh, we've, I mean, we've got, if you look at our starters... Four guys who are at least four, uh, three and a half stars. Two guys that are four and a half in between Wise and Walker. Walker is a very good player, and he's a bucket getter. Oh, eight scoring, six defensive ability. This is a national, like, this is an All-American type player. I don't know that he'll make it All-American, but he'll at least be All-Conference for us. Andrew Wilson, mm, 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 not great defensively. I don't know. He's he's good enough if he sticks around, maybe. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Ronald Smiley. Look at this. Good, good rebounder. Good passer as a big man. Good scoring. Great inside shooting. He's going to be fantastic. Fantastic. As the 320, what? He was ranked 329th in the nation. 329th. Nine at inside shooting, five at outside shooting, five at free throws, 
six scoring, seven passing, eight and seven offensive defensive rebounding, six defensive ability, seven shot blocking, seven stealing, nine athleticism, and he's a freshman. He's a freshman. He's a freshman. Oh my gosh. Ronnie Smiley is going to be incredible. All right. <clears throat> well, we're not going to have as much depth and consistency on this roster because this is just the way the college game has changed. But guys, like, <laughs> uh, I mean, I don't know about anybody that's watching the stream, but like, I had an experience. I had a good time tonight. It was a little bit of a roller coaster. You know, we started off, we got here, we went there. Learning the new system, learning the new transfers, big win over VCU and Purdue, bad losses to basically everybody else. Like, this was an absolutely great time. Um, I don't even know what to say. I hope y'all had a good time. Uh, I certainly did. Um, and that's pretty much it. Hit me up on Discord. If y'all had fun watching it, make sure that you're subscribed to uh, GM Games YouTube, GM Games Twitch. Uh, make sure that you're into the Discord on both GM Games and like Wolverine Studios. I, I'm pretty sure Chris is probably putting out notices. Follow Chris on Twitter. Uh, all that good stuff. Because uh, like this is what we're gonna do. It's it's not necessarily scheduled. When I have some time, I jump on here and do it. And I hope everybody enjoys it. I certainly do. It was all over the place. That's what we got. But um, end scene. We're done. Thank y'all. See y'all next time. Uh, go Flyers. Woo! 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 We're out. Later. <laughs>